everybody, I'm doing an update video on putting in a break and disconnect switches, which will be upstairs because I have a staircase going up both sides of my building so anybody can get to them from any direction no matter what. Um, right now our turbines are putting out some power, uh, really good power. This one up here is uh, making in the 200 range, this one down here is making in the 2 to 300 range, and this one down here is making in the 200 range. Winds are pretty good. We got, you can hear them, all our fans running. So the cables going up, go up and out the top, um, are all eight gauge stranded cable. And what we're working on right now is we're working on the perfect disconnect. Now, this is designed to be 100 amps per leg. Three legs, because we're working with three phase. Now, I use Ohmite. I'm using a five, so it allows it to still spin. Here's the cool part. When you go throw the brakes on, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be interrupting every one of these with a resistor. So it still feeds power down, allows it to spin in emergency wind conditions, but at the same time, puts a little load on the turbine, filters through, and instead of making say six, seven, eight hundred thousand watts and tearing my blades up, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to make 50 to 150 watts and maybe 200 watts and not tear my blades up. So the torque effect is going to cause it to just spin itself out of the wind. Same thing with this one over here. So the idea is to feed the power through this and back versus feeding it through here, direct connect. So that's what we're working on. Stay with me. I'll show you where I set those wires up for that. And we're going to get this stuff all put together. That's one for each one of the legs going through. All right. On the second floor, we have where our wires are going downstairs through there and up to their prospective turbines everywhere else. Well, over here, we have a little bit of a spare wire setup. Now, let's get on the other side right quick and I'll show you what we're doing. We're going to be coming back through here and joining these in the fashion I just showed you. So out here, fifth wheel sitting at right now is a set of stairs. And over here is a door that comes out from the second floor of the shop. And that puts this set up here right about center for what we're going to be doing. So we've got holes where the wires are going to come through. They're going to be cut, come through and attach right here, just like that. And then the wires are going to go from here, right straight back through and over. And that's going to be your direct feed. There's going to be lugs on back in the back. Now over here, the wires will come, hit the resistors, all three of the resistors, mount on a metal plate, and then back through the wall, back over to these same contacts right here. So the effect is, is that I'll be putting a 300 watt load in line back to the rectifier. So watch what we're doing here. There's three. And this is the in break setting. This is the flow through setting. There's covers that go on these. And when you walk out, it's plenty of clearance. It's almost six inches from the door there. But when you walk out, you're able to put a passing load through there. So it's gonna come through, go through the resistors, all three of them, come back through, and then go back into the system. So um, we're gonna have the feed from the turbines going through these holes and in the hitting in the center. And normally it'll just feed through there, straight, just like there was no cut wire. And however, when I've got wind storms, boom, I put it over there. The turbines will have a generalized load put on of 100 watts a piece as they feed through here in AC current but only one phase of it and coming through the other side it ends up being because it's ac about a 230 watt drop load soft load against the turbine so that you don't have to worry about burning up your pma on your turbine all right that's the idea your generator you don't want to burn it up by doing like these other people with a toggle switch that just dead shorts your wires together that's a good way to shoot 500 dollars right in the shitter this is a good way to save your turbines, save your blades, and save your trouble. All right, so let's keep on with that. 
And now we have the resistive load that's going to be the in-line resistive load. And the wires will come down from here, shoot through there, go back, and hook on. I was going to go inside the wall in that way, but i got a big tube of six stud right in the way. So I went ahead and I'm rooting it backwards here, and it'll go to these over here. So when you shoot that down, it's going to go through the resistive load, through the resistive load, down through here, the terminals, and then back. So that'll take the power from the turbines in the center, through there, through the resistive load, knocking 300 watts of power down. And if you take this in the phasing, it'll actually be about 210, 220, about 70 is all they'll equal um, because it's just a short run down. And that right there will make it to where my turbines have technically their brakes on and instead of the heat building up in the PMA, uh, in the top of the in the windings of the PMA the heat comes here So you don't get the heat build up in your alternator or your generator It actually burns it off in here and instead of it being converted and then burning it off Which creates a real big back load on it uh, or hitting a switch and shorten them out that just straight up burns them up You know like there's a lot of these people that sell those this design is designed to divert safely Makes your PMA last, puts the heat out where it's clean and safe. We have a metal backing, metal here, um, three inches off the wall, glass, no chance of fire, no polymer plastics or anything on it like the green ones or blue ones you see. Totally safe. Now we have got everything installed. We have got the brake switches installed. And right now, this is Billy Badass Turbine, my little China Marvel. And the way we have this is we have the brakes. Instead of shorting out directly the PMA, just crunching the wires together and shorting out the generator, um, like a lot of people sell, they sell a switch that just shorts the wires all together. And if you got a high wind, you just burned up your PMA or your generator or whatever you want to call it. Um, the way my system works, and I've been using this with different resistors, but this is the first full scale for three turbines I built, is I have a bypass system. So what'll happen is through normal functions, if I take this and I push it over here, with these two switches up, what I get is that effect of shorting out the wires. We don't want to do that on this turbine, this little Chinese made turbine. Now the, the thermodyne PMAs, you can do that with them. It's not generally going to hurt them unless the wind hits 35, 40 miles per hour, then you got problems uh, with any PMA. And so what we have here is we have right now we're producing a lot of warmth. These are hot. These switches here you see are down and these are out and up. These are 40 amp Pollock light switches, so they can handle 40 amps. You're not gonna reach that, you know, 80 amps in a your conversion. So what I have is I have a 100 amp per blade switches, and when I throw this switch over here with those brake switches out, what happens is it feeds the juice into these and then back into each other like that. So the power goes into this, and instead of going into the heat going into your pma so if my pma is currently making 21 volts over here it'll knock it down to where it's about 9 volts so it'll still allows it to spin if it's making 40 volts over here it's going to be making about 18 volts or 20 volts so it's still allowing it to spin but the more voltage it tries to make the hotter these will get the more resistance it'll get but it won't be a load that makes my generator overheat and burn out. So what it's doing is it's allowing it to spin up a certain percentage and then kind of cooling itself down or shutting itself down without overheating it. It's worked perfect with these thermodynes for years. I'm trying it on the Billy Badass turbine now. And if you take a look, here is the wall. Brake switches, shorts all three wires together but in this case shorts them through 100 watt resistors 5 ohm and i use 5 ohm so that when i'm not using brake switches it'll allow the voltage to go through with a 20 percent reduction so if i've got a bad windstorm and you know it's not furling right 
instead of getting 600 watts I'll get 480 and it'll feed back against the turbine kind of slowing the blades down a little bit but not creating the heat in the turbine it creates the heat here and that is the solution to burning out your PMAs with your braking so uh, I've still got the covers to put on the covers for the switches and it's located up in my shop on the second floor to where you can come up one set of stairs or the other set of stairs and get to it from any direction no matter what and that is the power wall braking and control system for my three turbines this one here is black this one here is the black wires so it is going to be chaos the white wires is gray matter and the red wires over here is the little china turbine so now we're wide open right here and i'm going to show you braking direct short and it just shuts her down i just heard it shut down won't just stopped so we'll close them back off and then we can take and we can feed the energy through the resistors all the way back and back to the battery bank reducing the incoming power so we don't burn things out downstairs making heat up here out of the way but still allowing it to make lots of power but reducing how much it makes and not putting the heat in the generator head same way with the little china turbine and the K, the uh, gray matter turbine so this is how it all works now i can take this one and i can pull these out and you can't hear it but it's slowed down but it's still running it's still running but it's feeding its power like that making these warm I got warm quick making these warm and instead of overheating the turbine so it, it allows it to still spin but it's like slowing it down or in a 40 mile an hour wind it acts more like it's in a 15 mile per hour wind still produces it just don't overheat your generator so pretty good setup let's go ahead and let it run for fr run free and I can run these in a moderate windstorm all of them on this side with the switches off and they'll produce about 60% of their power. The more they produce, the higher the voltage, the more it gets ate up, so it kind of steps it down. That's how this works, and it's a very impressive little system. Works great. So, um, real quick, power comes in right here in the center. It will run to here as a straight shot, as a straight shot, and they're all right now diverting, or not diverting, but they're feeding through. This is nice and warm, feeding through the resistors and back and down to the battery bank. They're not currently, the brakes are not on. Currently not shorted. I wouldn't, I don't care for shorting the little Chinese one too much. And to open them up and run them freely, we just run them straight over. Make sure the brakes are not on because you just don't want to hammer it like those people with those big toggle switches. And that's normal operation right there. All right, so sorry about it. It's a little tight area up here where I'm at setting this up, but coming up the door here, immediately access to the switches they're back about seven inches from the door swing and that's the build nice little setup all right guys if y'all have any questions just ask